Sorry I can't be there in person today. I'd love it to be some really cool uh, excuse, but I'm getting my windows replaced, so I've got to be at home. This is what happens at 35. You've got to do shit like that. It's boring. <laughs> <laughs> I've, honestly, I'm loving shows so much so far i think because in the sort of late 90s early 2000s i'm roughly a similar age to the characters you're playing uh and it's just the music and the nights out it just feels very familiar to to a londoner so i know i'm really really enjoying it um it's such a good script teresa is such a talent can you all just talk about first reading those scripts and what stood out most to you and what made this such an attractive proposition um i, I think i can speak for everyone when we all read it for the first time on our first like read through I think after was it episode four, we all literally got up clapping, just so excited to just do it because it was just that good. I think for me, it was the relatability about it, like for every character having their own relationship with their family, the relationships with the boys, the banter that would happen with the boys, all of that kind of stuff. I think through Teresa's writing was just shown so nicely. And we just knew as a show, if we did our jobs right, then something special could happen. So yeah, I think we were very lucky to have it. Yeah, definitely. I, I wanted to be in it before reading the script. <laughs> um, prior to having watched um, Rocks, um, like Teresa done before, which was amazing, written beautifully, and then finding out that she was attached to this project, that was already enticing enough, honestly. And then when you finally read the script and you see the characters that she's formed and that we got the opportunity to portray, yeah, man, it was, it was, it was, it was lovely to see. And then the fact that we've gone and done it and we're able to like just do the work to, to enable to bring these characters to life. Yeah, so it's a great feeling. And I always, I like, I, I just, I was excited to be attached to this, honestly. Very lucky, man. Mm. Very lucky. Even down to the words that I used in mm. all the certain slang, it was very accurate and very concise. Mm. And Teresa knew exactly what she was doing. So. It felt like not. Oh yes, sir. Um, it felt like it was like. <laughs> it felt like yeah, going back to being sixteen and like being a kid. Everyone had their own character trope, and like you had that um feel of it. Like yeah, you had these individual characters that you actually do remember back in the day, and it feels like yeah. Damn, that was kind of like me a little bit. That was them, like you kind of remember that in that sense. And it felt very natural to play those characters. Did um did any of you like know each other beforehand? And if not, how was it all coming together for the first time to create this friendship bond that really illuminates the show? What makes it so special to me is that that unity amongst all of you guys. How was it kind of coming in together and creating that? Was it was there anything you sort of did you hang out much on set before you were shooting? Or was it a bit of a kind of baptism of fire? I think the first thing is like the audition, the audition process was quite intense to begin with. Um, There's a lot of people to, um, that were all kind of at, the, at this audition. So by the time we got to our final audition, it was pretty much down to just the five of us and we were there. I feel like after being put in such a quite overwhelming experience to begin with, having us all like tied together was quite a bonding experience in itself. And then the feeling of wanting each one of us to succeed exactly how we would want to felt like it was like your own dream coming true in a way um and then we spent lots of time together before we started shooting um we had a few weeks rehearsal and even outside of rehearsal and times like we just we just liked each other to be honest we liked each other enough to sp opt to spend our personal free time with each other and that kind of gave us stuff chemistry wise for free um in the show and I um I love the music in this. I miss some some stuff of my generation, like more fire crew, heartless crew, obviously all the garage. Were you guys were you like privy to this music beforehand, or was it quite new to this when you were signing up to the project? Because you're a bit younger than me. <laughs> just yeah. a bit, just a bit. Just a bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think oh yeah, no. I think for myself, yeah, I think definitely research had to be done because I wasn't around for when that was really popular. Um, so research had to be done. Obviously, I was privy to it as a scene, like the garage scene going into grime and obviously having jungle there as well. Um, but I think just, yeah, research, honestly, it was it was nice to be able to, obviously, there's so much on YouTube, there's so much on the internet, just a, a one YouTube search and you can find so much on that genre of music and that time, what they were wearing, what the shows looked like, how, how packed out the shows were when they set out Alexandra Palace and stuff. So, yeah, no, I think a lot of research was had to be done, but... It was, yeah, it was just like a learning thing for me, which I really enjoyed doing, to be honest. 
Yeah, because you were playing teenagers in like the like the late nineties and the early two thousands. Did you speak mm-hmm. to any of your parents, older siblings, or family members, and that from that who lived through that period and were that sort of age to try and get a kind of deeper understanding of it? Yeah, um, I spoke to someone in my estate that used to own a studio, um, and he was like our first when we was growing up. We we didn't really have the facilities to have like a, a studio, so it was kind of like a. Um, a, a rundown flat and we had turned it into a studio and he just used to bring all the kids in there and stuff like that so I eventually ended up telling him I got the role in grandkids and what it was about and he was like this is so sick because I remember where the block was it's right next to one of the pirate radio stations so he was like I remember watching the boys always go up there and having to go to pirate radio and stuff like that so it was yeah it's pretty wicked because I think music, be it garage or grime, has sort of represented such a kind of creative outlet for young people in London, away from the more kind of outdated academic path, which in some ways is also true of acting and something all of you guys have done. Could you all relate to your characters on those terms as a group of people who have chosen to go down a, a kind of creative path, I suppose? Yeah, no, I think especially with Dane's character being like a dreamer and super ambitious, just thinking anything is possible, I know every single person here personally, and I know they have the same thing. Everyone here is ambitious. We all want to, you know, try and do things in a creative sense. And that's similar with the boys. So yeah, no, hundred percent. Yeah. Do you, do you think there are enough initiatives out there to encourage young people to try something a bit different and feel like industries like music and acting is accessible and, and open to them as an option? It could always be more. Yeah, um, yeah. Always. There could always be more encouragement because I think that there's, there's plenty of, there's plenty of people who have, the minerals or excitement or mind or passion to make any one of their dreams come true, but they never get to the point where they ever feel like they can make that first step. So I think talking about whether there's enough or not enough is a bit of like, I don't know, it's a bit of a, it's a tricky, it's a tricky thing where we don't want to make any legislations or anything, but like there are definitely people who, it's not only the people who, it's not only the people who arrive here are the only ones who want to do it, put it that way. There's lots of people who would love to be able to do some of the things that we get to be able to do, or even our characters have done in the show. But it's sometimes about having enough forces around in your community to make it feel like your dreams can actually be actualized. In terms of music, I like the fact that um, DJ Target, he is um, doing this show um, called Rap Game, and it's just nice to see um, young people pursuing um, music, their music careers and stuff. So... That's that's something that we need more of as well. Have any of you guys got musical talents or any instruments or any songwriters amongst you? I played some musical instruments when I was growing up. I was a talented musician. <laughs> <laughs> I was a magician as well, but I was also a musician, yeah. But like I got I got bullied, man. I played the clarinet a little bit. But I played the piano, drums. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, I didn't play any grime instruments. They don't, they don't, they don't in use. I, I didn't play no grime instruments. I didn't know there was grime instruments. I got asked the music question. I answered it. <laughs> yeah, what's what is a grime instrument? That's a grime instrument. <laughs> Go on, use tell me. <laughs> 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 um, I was going to ask just a couple more questions. I'm going to ask because I mean, I just wondered. You know, you sort of talk about speaking to to kind of people um, of, of kind of like who are living around at that sort of time. Were there anyone uh, who, who was available to you guys or came to set who was kind of one of the who were actually from that kind of industry, who were from the kind of garage and grime industries? You know, the the Wileys and Skeptors and Dizzy Rascals of the world. Was was there any opportunity for you guys to to reach out and speak to anyone to who were uh, who was actually a part of that sort of community? Aaron Francis. Aaron Francis, he used to work with Dizzy Rascal back in the day, and he was one. He was one of the people that came and helped us. Williams, Aaron Williams. Aaron, he was very long last name. Yes. Um, Aaron. There was villain. There was um, Getz. There was rude kid. Uh, one day Dizzy Rascal passed by when we was shooting as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and obviously, <laughs> <laughs> and obviously Target as well, has a Target. Yeah, genius. Like Seth, G- yeah, genius. genius. Yeah. So there's a few, like, just of that time. Shiesty. Shiesty. Yeah, there's a few. But I think that the love that all of these people had for the time and the cultural aspects of it, and even some, I think some subconsciously they ended up just being so vulnerable with that 
and just showing us so much just in the way that they spoke to us how they felt about it and then he was able to kind of personalize that and that all of that stuff was be able to become precious for us personally and it didn't feel like disjointed like we were telling somebody else's story it felt like we were able to make this story something of like a collective thing that we then just emanated very nice as well like we ended up in get studio and dancing yeah. gets was teaching us how to dance um so just very finally before i go i just wondered if you guys have got any plans for for launch night surely that's got to be worth a takeaway hey that's a great question that's where's i but sure have you got are you gonna have like the family round and stuff when it when it launches are you gonna have like are you gonna make a little a night of it when 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 the time comes Definitely might be a family to watch yeah, at the launch for sure, man. 100%. For sure, for sure, man. I'm probably gonna binge it all in one night. Yeah, one sitting down. Yeah, we start. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Well, best of luck with the release, guys. And I'm, I'm just honestly, like I said, I've loved. I've only seen two episodes, but I think it's great telly. So I can't wait to see more. Thank you, mate. Bye bye. See you later. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, hey you guys. <laughs> hey you guys. Hey, that's what they all say. Hey you guys. Hey you guys.